All right, in this video we're going to be looking at the MOSFET as a switch with respect to proving which uh, region we're in. So far, and for example when we looked at biasing, I said as you increase VGS, you actually move along this load line, and once you get high enough, all right, enough, we get into the ohmic region. Well, there's a way that we can actually prove to say, well, what is the range of voltage that will leave us in the saturation region, and therefore what is the range that will get us past that and into the ohmic region. So, we can do this. First of all, it's good to just draw the circuit again. I always recommend you do this for every example that you're working through. So, we're doing a low side switch, like so, and that's effectively remembering our voltage divider. Alright, so we have RD, in fact we'll call that VDD, VDD, RD, RDS, that's VDS, that's VGS, gate, source, drain. Alright, so effectively this is the model that we can work between. Now, what we do when we want to analyze the circuit to work out what region we're in, and we're going to do a little set of drain curves here just so you can visualize this. Something like that. All right, with our load line. Remember, as VGS increases and we come up this load line, we move from the saturation region into the ohmic region. The easiest way to solve this problem is to use a couple of rules associated with our FET. And one of them says, in the saturation region, there's a couple of uh, equations that we can use to help us solve this problem. In the saturation region, VDS is greater or equal to VGS minus VGS threshold. All right, so in the saturation region, VDS is greater or equal to VGS minus VGS threshold. And the drain current is equal to K times VGS minus V threshold squared. All right, so we've got a couple of new equations here that hold only in the saturation region, only here. Now you may ask, well, aren't we interested in the ohmic region, for example, that's well, this is a switching circuit. Well, in reality it's actually easier to solve for the range of VGS and saturation and then say, well, once I know this voltage here, okay, I can then say, well, then anything greater than that puts me in the ohmic region. So it's easier to solve these equations work out what that range of voltage is, and therefore uh, say, well, anything higher than that, then I have to be in the ohmic region. All right, so let's see how we apply this. In order to apply it for your FET, you must know K, the conduction parameter, normally in milliamps per voltage squared. All right, and you must know the whoop, GS threshold. Right, so those are the two that you must know to be able to solve this problem. So let's see how it all fits together. One thing is I'm going to introduce a couple of new uh, numerature here. So we're going to be calling, just for convenience, the voltage at gate to source, our input voltage, and the voltage at the output, our uh, output voltage. All right, so VI is equal to VGS and V out is equal to V DS effectively. And that's just shorthand to make it a little bit easier as I go through this. Right, so using these equations, let's see what we've got. If we have a look at this problem here, all right, we can see that what we need in terms of our saturation region, in order for us to be in there, we need V out must be greater or equal to V in minus V threshold. Right? So that one has to be true for us to be in the saturation region. We also have another expression where ID is equal to the conduction parameter VI minus V threshold squared. 
right? So that's an expression that we've got for current. Now, what we're trying to do is solve for VI that gives us a uh, satisfies that this equation here. In other words, what is the value of VI that satisfies this equation here? Now, in order to do that, we need to know, well, we've got an equation here for current, but how does that current affect V out? So there's one more equation that we can write down, and that is that V out is equal to VCC minus ID times RD. All right, so voltage out here, or the voltage here, if you want to say it, that's V out there, is equal to the current flowing through here, ID, times RD, and then the voltage supply minus that. So we're basically saying the voltage VDD minus the volt drop across the top resistor gives us the volt drop across the bottom. All right, remember the sum of all the volt drops across the circuit will equal the supply. Knowing this, we can start to substitute some of these values in. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're first going to rewrite this right hand side of the equation. VCC minus the expression we have for ID here, which is KVI minus VT squared times RD. It has to be greater than or equal to VI minus VT. All right, so all I've done is taken this expression for ID into here, which has gone to here, and I've taken this expression for V0, VI minus VT, which I've put on this side here. Now what we can do with this is we don't actually want to solve a problem which has got a greater or equal into. In fact, let's just solve where it's equal to, uh, and that will give us the, the range that we need. Right, so we can go VCC minus KRD, VI minus VT squared minus VI plus VT is equal to zero. Now this problem is not too difficult to solve because we know VCC, we know K, we know RD, we know the threshold voltage, so the only thing left to solve is the input voltage. And if we solve this expression, which is just a quadratic, then all you need to do, punch it into the calculator, you'll get two values out. One that results in uh, VI being less than threshold voltage, so you can get rid of that, and one where it is greater than, and therefore uh, suitable for use within uh, the circuit. So you'll come up with something that looks like this. V threshold is less than and equal to VI, which is less than and equal to a value that I call VSAT. Right? So the result of this is this value here, VSAT. Once you know that VSAT value, then you can say, well, any VI or VGS voltage greater than VSAT is going to put us in the ohmic region. And therefore, once we're in the ohmic region, we know we're operating this device much more efficiently and therefore as we intended to. Alright, so only things you really need to remember are these two expressions which are for the saturated region. This expression comes from basic circuit theory. Substitute those in. Rearrange and solve as a quadratic. You'll get two roots, one less than V threshold, throw away, one greater than V threshold is the one we want, and that comes up into here. All right. Once you're operating in the ohmic region, there's a couple of new equations for you. So in the ohmic region, VDS must be less than or equal to VGS minus V threshold. Now this will happen purely based on the fact that as soon as your VGS exceeds VSAT then this will start to occur because uh, we've already solved the ohmic region and ID is equal to this more complicated uh, expression VGS minus V threshold times VDS minus VDS squared. Alright, and so then we can substitute the values into here, we'll rearrange as required, 
and then solve for the drain current that we could expect within our particular circuit. Alright, so this does get a little bit tricky. The hardest part though is solving this quadratic. Just rearrange and expand this out, put it into standard quadratic form, get the coefficients into your calculator, solve it, get these values of V sat, VGS any value greater than that we can substitute into here, solve for VDS associated with it, All right, and once you've got that you can then predict the drain current or circuit voltages that you require in the ohmic region.